Now today I'm doing the preparation work on the draw bar of the camper so we can put that 800mm extension in before taking it up to see welding stig later in the week. Now welcome to episode two of the draw bar extension series in uh, my off-road camper build. Now for those that haven't watched the whole series, this chassis on this camper is a number five army trailer. So it's a military trailer dragged around by the Australian army in Vietnam and Australia um, by short wall base Land Rovers originally. Later on it went to their long wall base series. Now, these trailers were designed so they would follow the tracks of the Land Rovers when they were going through the bush. Now whilst that may have been okay for the army dragging these things through the bush, when people like myself are buying them from the public auction and uh, turning them into some type of camper trailer, they're a little bit twitchy behind the vehicle and you've got to put a lot of ball weight on them to have them sitting nicely behind the vehicle. It's a common modification with these trailers to lengthen the drawbar. That length can be anything from say 400 mils, oh, some are 1.2 metres. It's fairly common to do an 800 to a 1 metre extension and that allows people to add storage on the drawbar. I'm going for an 800 mil extension. It's, a, it's not too long, not too short. Um, the Goldilocks thing, as far as I'm concerned. And it'll also allow me to build another box or reconfigure a complete new box system. I haven't decided yet. So I can then carry two lithium batteries, the Weber barbecue and the fridge. And I'm also hoping when I can reconfigure these boxes, I've got enough room to store the Darche Annex that goes under the Darche awning. That means that the Jeep will have hardly anything in it, which is where I'm aiming for. So, at this point, I've got to pull this box off. Um, there's eight bolts that go into the camper shell. There's a U-bolt that goes around the drawbar. I have to disconnect and take out the battery, and I also have to take out the wiring loom from the box so I can remove the box. It, it should be a fairly simple process. I've built it so that it will come off, and I also like to have these sorts of things that if something does go wrong, and it's something to think about if you build this sort of thing, that if you want to change something, because these boxes are really easy easy to reconfigure if you can take them off and put another one on. There was a sort of mind when I built this box that I'll build this to suit the Waco fridge that I currently have and it's only occurred to me lately that um, what happens if the fridge dies, can I get one the exact same size to fit in it? So having a box you can take off, remake, reconfigure, uh, isn't a bad thing because you're not trying to reconfigure the whole camper shell then. Now one thing I will go over before I start is that I haven't put any charge into the battery since I came home from the South Coast trip uh, five weeks ago. We're sitting at 98.5% capacity and the only charge going into this battery is what it's picking up off the solar panels each day. It's really good. It's, this thing is just looking after itself. Um, I came out the other night and I thought, oh, I haven't put any charge in the battery. Check the battery and it's basically full. How good is that? On with the show.
Now the box is off and that's taking me about 30 minutes uh, and that's to disconnect the battery, take the battery out, take the whole of the switch panel out and um, remove the box from the camper completely. So on to working out where we're going to put the cut in this draw bar and where we have to drill for the plug welds. Now just to refresh our memory this 800mm extension has an 800mm outer that's the same diameter as the draw bar that's currently on the trailer and we've got two 300mm pieces that will slide inside the current draw bar and we'll plug weld those and then there'll be a weld around the circumference. Now for the cut I've decided that we'll cut it here and if we measure 300 back to the camper that gives us, we're quite close to the front um, cross member but it gives us room for whatever's in the draw bar because I don't know and that also gives us 300 forward. Now the actual cut of the draw bar we'll do a welding sticks workshop because I have to tow the camper up there. However, I've been advised it would be good if I could drill out the plug weld holes which are 100 mils either side of this cut and there to be a 12 millimeter hole. So we'll drill those out now and those holes will be at the side and just go straight through with the drill. Now I've got the holes drilled out for the plug welds on either side of the draw bar. Um, I just need to flap weld the holes and around the centre section so when I go up to welding stick you can just cut it and weld it. Now on to extending the wiring loom. Now with the trailer, the trailer core I'm going to cut it here and I'm going to pull it back underneath the trailer because I want to put a uh, junction box there.
Now the reason I've put in the junction box is that I don't know if the food from the Jeep is going to be the end result. I may want to run it differently. Um, I just want to get this drawbar on work out what I'm doing with storage on the drawbar and then go from there. So I may be replacing that again and having something that I can quickly swap over leads isn't a bad thing. So that's about uh, as far as I can go today guys. Um, I still have to flap wheel the weld points on the existing drawbar before I go up to see welding stig. But um, next episode it'll all be welded up, we'll finish it off, we'll repaint the drawbar and then we'll look at what we're doing with storage. So I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, if you like what I'm doing, like and subscribe to the channel because it really does help out and we'll see you next time. Bye now.